Good morning and welcome to Prayer and Devotion on t this day, which is Wednesday, June 29th. Um, started off today with uh, Mark Miller and the New Haven Collective from his album, Imagine the People of God. And that song was Imagine the People of God featuring Cassandra Kellum. So good, good song to start with. Um, and it's good to be with you today. So let me say good morning to all of you. Today we're uh, looking at Isaiah chapter 58, Isaiah 58. And the title of our devotion is A Beacon of Hope, Isaiah chapter 58. Well, let me say good morning to Donna and Celia. It's good to have you here today, praying for you as we start the day, and Gail and Margarita. I'm glad you're here holding you in prayer as well. Good morning, Cecilia and Admire. I'm glad you're here holding you both in prayer and Israel and Lisa. It's good to have you here also praying for you as we start this day. Good morning, Susan. And thank you for the, the lovely message. Yes, holding you and and uh, holding you in for Father's Day, and thank you for thinking of me. And good morning, Janet and Daniel. I'm glad you're here holding you in prayer as well. 
Good morning, Barbara and Genevieve. I'm glad you're here praying for you today. And Celia. And yeah, Mar um, thank you, Margarita. And I think there was someone else that mentioned Mark, Genevieve. Um, yeah, he doesn't feel well, but he's okay. He'll be fine. He'll be fine. I woke him up in the middle of a nap yesterday. So this is my younger son who has COVID. So thank you for, for thinking of him and praying for him. I, I now I'm lost. So let's say uh, Shelly and Vinette, I'm glad you're here holding you in prayer. And Yolette and Marilyn, praying for some healing on your eye. Glad you're here holding you in prayer. And Blanca and Sheila, it's good to have you here, as well as Debbie and Betty. I'm glad you're here. And Michelle, God bless you. I hope you're having a wonderful vacation. I'm, good. I'm glad you're with us as well, holding you in prayer as well. So we are in Isaiah 58 this morning. I'm going to be reading verses 9 and 10, Isaiah 58, 9 and 10. As you turn there, my name is Cindy Stauffer. I am blessed to serve as a pastor at the United Methodist, the United Methodist Church at New Brunswick. And we are on the corner of George and Liberty Street in the heart of the city of New Brunswick. I'm a little stuffy today. Um, so let's look at Isaiah 58, uh, beginning in verse 9. I'm going to start in verse 8, sorry, verse 8. Then your light shall break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall quickly spring up. Your vindica vindicator shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help. And he will say, here I am. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom be like the noonday a beacon of hope. Um, the Living Bible translates verse 10 this way. Feed the hungry, help those in trouble, then your light will shine out from the darkness and the darkness around you shall be as bright as day. In a grassy field covered in a blanket of darkness, a single firefly can be seen. No matter how vast the darkness, a tiny amount of light can pierce it like a beacon of hope. In our lives, light can be so many small, simple, things, a kindness shown, a hand held, a neighbor helped, a friend hugged, a parent called, a child rocked, a note written, a prayer lifted, a meal delivered. All we do from a place of love can change the darkness in this world. Nothing is more effective or more meaningful. God's love is how light travels through us to get to the lives that need it. And if there's ever a time we needed to be conduits of love, it's now. Spotlights, floodlights, flashlights, beacon, a candle, a match light, or a spark, every bit of light in any sort of capacity makes an amazing amount of difference. 
We can go through our days thinking we don't have a minute to do another thing, but God is the strength and the supernatural power source we need to keep sending the love. There's no greater reward for our time. There's no deeper satisfaction for our souls. There's no better recharge for our spirits. Love is what created us and it's what we're created for. It's always the best way to spend our time and our resources. It's a new day to be, to be a light in a small and simple way. What God opens our eyes to, we should open our hearts to. God's love is our shelter, our strength, and our reason to shine. How wonderful that we're chosen to dispel the darkness in any way that we can. Sorry, I'm trying. Shelly, we will be lifting up Tanisha uh, for healing of, of, and uh, during her biopsy tomorrow. Um, and uh, if you message me, I've got a couple things in the area that she might be able to reach out for. But we'll definitely be praying for Tan Tanisha. I just saw that prayer request. So, shining light. This is not anything new. <laughs> but something that I've been thinking a lot about lately. I, um, once again, I say I have to get off of Facebook. <laughs> but, you know, right now... There, there's so much going around with all the Supreme Court rulings and people on both sides, both sides of, uh, uh, of the, the aisle. But what's kind of been upsetting to me to read is people that I don't know very well, but, but maybe they're connected via family or we just haven't seen in a long time because they live all you know further in the country who, who um, are not, have, I mean, maybe when they grew up, they went to church, but they haven't been to church in a long time. And they see what's happening in the world and they, and they see Christianity as the burden that is, that, is, that is causing so much harm around them. And they have no problem naming it. And it doesn't make me want to respond to them, but what it does make, what does happen is that I feel saddened because the way they are visioning Christianity, the way they see the church is not the church that I know. It's not the work that we're doing. And so you're, you realize that somehow we've, we've, we're not on track, right? When I come back to this song from Mark Miller, Imagine the People of God, and I come back today's, to today's scripture in Isaiah, and I am reminded that God's people are God's people um, are called to be light and love in the world, not called to condemn or separate. That God's people are called to feed and care for one another, feed the hungry, help those in trouble. Th that is who we are called to be. And that is that has always been my experience of the church. Now, I didn't grow up in other churches. I grew up in not in, the, in not in New Brunswick, but that that was, you know, what I knew. And so what I what I've come to realize as I read these posts and I, I see the anger that people have with the church is that we have so much work to do, not in justifying ourselves, but in being light. The world needs more light, more people willing to offer healing and hope. When the church becomes a beacon of hope, and not an arbitrator of who belongs and who doesn't belong, 
Then, when we become a beacon of hope for those who feel hopeless, for those who are hungry, for those who have no place to go, for those who need to see light in the midst of darkness, then, and only then, will we become the beacon of hope, the church that God calls us to be. And so, my friends, we have work to do. We have work to do. So I invite you, and what's nice about this devotion is sometimes the work is really simple. You know, maybe it's, maybe it's just telling other people about, you know, the work that's happening in your, in your church, or, but maybe it's even easier. Maybe it's just smiling at someone that needs to know that they're loved, but whatever it is, if we are going to be a beacon of hope, we need to get out there and feed the hungry and help those in trouble and care for the lost and the least and be reminded that sometimes we are the lost and the least and give thanks to God for finding us as well. Let us pray. God, we come before you today acknowledging that your church has not always been faithful, that we, as a part of your church, have not always been faithful. So forgive us this day, Lord. Forgive us when we get swept up in making decisions about who or who is worthy and who is not. Forgive us when we fight against one another because we don't see things the same way. Forgive us when we don't stand up against unjust laws. Forgive us when we hide your light because it's just easier to stay silent and do nothing. And lead us, Lord. We acknowledge that there is great darkness in the world around us, but we also know that it only takes a little bit of light just at the right moment to offer hope to someone else. So lead us to be your church, the people of God, sharing and caring and surrounding one another in prayer and lifting each other up and healing one another and sitting beside one another and holding one another's hand, or calling one another Help us this day, Lord, to find ways to be your church, to find ways to be a beacon of hope in the world around us. We ask all of this in your precious name, Lord Jesus, as together we pray the prayer that you taught your disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Love is all we are called to be. Yes, thank you, Debbie. So I wanted to just say something real quick. Tomorrow's going to be the last prayer and devotion before I leave. Um, but somebody had asked, like, can we go back and look at previous ones? There's about on, on our YouTube channel, which you can get to from our website, umcnb.org. On our YouTube channel, 
you can watch, there's probably about almost three years worth of prayer and devotion videos. If that's something, if you want to have prayer and devotion, you can go back and watch as many videos as you want. They're all on there. They're all on YouTube. Uh, so I invite you to do that if that's something that you want. Um, but there are other options for, for this time as well. Um, but I just wanted to, I promised uh, Marilyn McLean that I would share that with you. So if you want to go back and watch videos, that works as well. Um, but I will be with you tomorrow. God loves you, my friends. And so do I. Have a very blessed day.